Hi everyone, this is Paul Hawkshurst of Canon USA. I hope you're doing well out there in production hub land. Uh, and I came here today because I want to talk to you about a couple of brand new exciting products that we have. First off, the C300 Mark III. Now, uh, this is a camera that I've been waiting for for a very long time. It's uh, the newest in our Cinema EOS line and it comes right on the heels of the C500 Mark II. Now, a really exciting about, thing about this camera is that it has a brand new 4K Super 35 millimeter dual gain output sensor. Now, dual gain output is interesting because what it does is it assigns different gains to each of the photodiodes that are in the sensor. And this allows you to get all the information retained in the highlights as well as really, really clean shadow areas. So in the end, you're going to be getting about over 16 stops of total dynamic range, which is the most from any Canon Cinema EOS camera before. Uh, very, very cool. What's driving that is a Digic DV7 processor. And this is the same processor that's also in the C500 Mark II. So speaking of which, speaking of C500 Mark II, the body of the camera of the C300 Mark III is exactly the same. That means that all of your accessories all of the expansion units, all of the third-party rigs that you have, they're all gonna work exactly the same from the C500 Mark II to the C300 Mark III. So let's talk about frame rates. The big thing with the C300 Mark III is that you're able to shoot 4K and 2K in full sensor readout up to 120 frames per second. So that's right, we're finally pushing the, uh, the frame rates here. Additionally, if you choose to go into super 16 millimeter crop mode, you can go up to 180 frames per second. When you're in super 16 crop mode, you are shooting a 2K resolution. And what formats are we shooting? Well, the first is Cinema Raw Light, which like the original C200 and then the C500 Mark II, it's a, it's a new form of uh, raw that we have that's getting a lot of traction in the industry. Um, and what you're looking at at 4K is you're looking at about one gigabit per second. All of this is being shot onto uh, CF Express cards. There are two CF Express card slots in the camera, just like the C500 Mark II. Um, there's also one SD card slot for proxies. So whether I shoot the C Cinema Raw Lite or I shoot the XF AVC, which the camera can also do, I can record proxies to that SD card as well. Uh, so going back to the C500 Mark II, all of those things, accessories and functionality in the C500 Mark II that made the camera really, really popular has also carried over to the C300 Mark III. So I'm talking about user interchangeable lens mounts, which is great. You got a PL mount with Cook Eye interface and you have a locking EF mount as well. I'm also talking about the uh, anamorphic D squeeze. So if you do go over that PL mount, now you, you open up your world to a whole bunch of anamorphic lenses. So the camera can D squeeze so that you can monitor both two times and 1.3 times anamorphic lenses. Uh, on top of that, dual pixel autofocus has kind of reached its apotheosis when it comes to cinema EOS because for the first time we're able to do 120 frames per second in 4K with uh, cinema EOS, that's great. Um, additionally, the electronic image stabilization has carried over from the C500 Mark II. That's been getting a lot of use and a lot of good feedback, uh, as well as user installable LUTs. So if you use Blackmagic Resolve and uh, you can load in your files, you can make your own LUTs, put it out as a cube LUT, and install it directly into the camera. So really, really cool functionality to help increase your workflow. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is a brand new lens that we're coming out with. This is the 25 to 250 Cine Servo lens. Now this lens is really, really exciting because it goes right in there in between the, the really famous 17 to 120 Cine Servo and the exalted 50 to 1000 Cine Servo. Um, and actually a lot of technology that went into creating the 50 to 1000 has gone into this lens. And when you finally get your hands on it, you'll see why, because the size and the weight of it is unlike anything you've ever seen for a 25 to 250. The lens is a super 35 millimeter um, coverage. Uh, however, it has a 1.5 times extender in it. So when I engage that 1.5 times extender, I'm getting 37.5 to 375 millimeters. 
But what's really special here is that when that extender is engaged, the coverage of the lens becomes full frame. So I'm actually able to cover full frame sensors now with that lens um, at 37.5 to 375 millimeters. So when I'm not using the extender, my, uh, my f-stops, you're looking at a, a t-stop, pardon me, of 2.95, that ramps to 3.95. Now, this ramp doesn't start to 187 millimeters. So ostensibly, you're looking at about a, a seven times range where you have no ramp. So that's still a pretty good amount of zoom range with no ramping. Um, on top of that, you have the 11 blade iris that Canon is kind of always known for for the cinema lenses, makes a really nice looking uh, round bokeh. And then another interesting thing about this lens is that the close focus is really, really unique for a 25 to 250. You're looking at a, a four, fi four foot close focus. Um, so you can get really, really, really tight. Add on to that, that it actually does have a, uh, a macro adjustment ring as well. So you can get some really, really nice close shots of that. Um, now here's the kicker. I talked about the, the weight and size a little bit, but now this is where I'm really putting into perspective. This lens is 11.1 .1 inches long and 6.7 pounds. So that is roughly very close to our 17 to 120. If you've ever used the 17 to 120, now you have a 25 to 250 that is about the same size, and that is pretty amazing. The lens comes in both EF mount and PL mount. Uh, with EF mount, you're gonna be getting all of those extended functionalities that you come to expect from EF mount glass, such as dual pixel autofocus when you're using it on a Canon camera, and all of the metadata. If you get a PL mount version, then you can get Cook Eye integration for your metadata through the PL mount. So yes, a very, very exciting new product and uh, we can't wait to get it out there and see what you guys think. Thank you.